What's up everybody? Today we're gonna talk about whiskey, but not just any whiskey. Today, we are gonna talk about one of the rarest bourbon whiskeys that exists on the market, Pappy Van Winkle. And in order to tell this story, well, I'm gonna need to pour myself a drink and you should too. So sit back and relax and enjoy the story. Okay, for today's vlog, I'm gonna be drinking the Van Winkle 12 year lot B. It's the only one of the Van Winkle collection that's 90 proof. Makes it just a little bit smoother. Oh man, that smells so good. Cheers. Let's start with the Rip Van Winkle story. This is a story written by Washington Irving. He's the guy who wrote Sleepy Hollow. Um, he wrote it in the early 1800s about a Dutch guy in a colony right around the revolutionary period in the Catskills of New York. He can't stand his abusive shrew of a wife. His only escape from her is to go out into the woods with his rifle and his dog. One day he sees this guy carrying a keg of liquor up a hill and that guy asks him to help distribute that liquor to a bunch of Danish guys who are for some reason bowling in the middle of the woods. And he does and when no one's looking he drinks some of that liquor. He gets pretty well sauced, he passes out and he wakes up and it's 20 years later. The only real connection between the story and the liquor is the Dutch name. So let's move on to Julian Van Winkle, who was the founder of Pappy Van Winkle. Julian Van Winkle, Mr. Pappy himself, he started making and selling liquor when he was 18 years old in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And then eventually he became the president of a company called Stitzel Weller. Now these guys produce some of the best bourbon in the country, including W.L. Weller and Rebel Yell and a bunch of other really good ones. Get this, Stitzel Weller was one of the only liquor producers to get a license to produce liquor during Prohibition. They sold it to doctors for medical purposes. He's 89 years old in this photo right here. At that time, he was the oldest active liquor producer he died in 1965 at 91 years old. Here's to you, Pappy. After he died, there was a ton of disagreement about what to do with the company. And his son ended up having to sell the company. They sold the rights to all of the liquor labels, except for one. Old Rip Van Winkle. So the crazy thing about that is that after the sale, Julian Jr. and his son Julian III had to go around buying back their barrels of liquor so that they could bottle it and label it under their own label. Buying back their barrels, wow, that is a lot of alliteration. Julian Jr. died in 1981. R.I.P. Mr. Jr. Julian III decided to contract the production of this liquor to Buffalo Trace, but it doesn't matter because this family recipe is delicious. It won like a gazillion awards, including an unheard of 99 out of 100 from the Beverage Tasting Institute. All right, what am I talking about now? All right, so let's get into why this stuff is so rare. These guys only produce like 7,000 cases of this stuff a year. That's only like 84,000 bottles. For comparison purposes, Jim Beam produces like 84 million bottles a year. So there's that. They only come out once a year in the fall. And if you're lucky enough to get a bottle from a liquor store that's selling it at cost, you can actually buy it pretty reasonably. The problem is, most liquor stores won't sell it at cost. For stores that do get Pappy Van Winkle, they really only get like a bottle or two, maybe. So they tend to deal with it in one of five ways. First, they don't sell it. They keep it for themselves and they drink it. Which, why wouldn't they? It's absolutely delicious. 
second, they sell it first come first serve, in which case it's usually gone before you even know what happened. Third, they jack up the price so it's almost like you're paying black market prices at a liquor store. Four, they sell it on the black market. Or five, they do a rare whiskey raffle. liquor store at Park Street in downtown Crossing in Boston. They're doing a raffle giveaway of Pappy Van Winkle. This right here, that's my buddy Ryan. And uh, yeah, hopefully we're both gonna win a bottle. I can't believe you just won! Nice yes! That's how you win! One bottle of Pappy Van Winkle, 23 year for $2.99. Stan Marco! Please come up! Man, I can't believe he just won. That's totally awesome. You know, you never expect to win. You pretty much figure you won't, but uh, he just won, so. I don't know, maybe next year I'll win. So if you're gonna buy bourbon on the black market, there's a number of things that you should look for. First and foremost, you should know that these guys are producing liquor in a multi, multi million dollar facility, which means if anything looks wrong with the bottle, it's probably fake. You should look at the foil on the top of the bottle. Come on, Cannon, focus. The foil should be tight and unbroken. It should look absolutely perfect. The liquor should be about an inch, inch and a half below the bottom of the foil right here. Take a look at the label. The label should be clean. There should be no watermarks or liquor marks. A lot of times what these guys are doing is they're buying empty liquor bottles and filling it with fake garbage liquor. So keep an eye out for that. Last but not least, take a look. There should be a laser engraved serial number right on the bottom there. I don't know if you can see that. But for every year they produce liquor, they put a laser engraving that tells you the date it was produced, the date it was aged, all of that stuff. And you can find out more about that stuff if you Google it online. Just be careful. If I'm gonna buy these on the black market, I always like to meet them in person. It's important to get a gauge on their honesty and make sure that they are who they say they are and they're not selling you fake liquor. All right, today is the day. I have successfully used the internet to source a bottle of 15-year Pappy Van Winkle. I just stopped at the bank to pick up some cash. I gotta drive a little ways to go meet this guy, but uh, man, am I excited. How's that sound, all right? I'm gonna do my very best to record this meeting with this guy. I feel like an undercover agent, this is awesome. Um, I'm gonna do my very best. Hopefully the quality of the sound is good and hopefully the range of the microphone will reach to wherever I go to pick up this bottle, but... I'm gonna call this guy. Hey, there he is. Hey, man. I got it. Man, I'm so excited. In the end, just be smart about buying this stuff. Make sure you know what you're doing. Cheers, everyone. Enjoy your holiday season. not sober.
Beverage Tasting Institute. Beverage Tasting Institute. Beverage Tasting Institute. Mm-mm. That's not right.